now we're gonna get into the geometry. And in the geometry, there's just a couple of things I wanna pinpoint. First is Pythagorean theorem. Know your Pythagorean theorem. Get used to your Pythagorean theorem again. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Where A and B, A and B represent the legs of the triangle and C is always the hypotenuse. So as long as you do that, you'll be able to find all your values and um, do the equation accordingly. Next, I want to really focus on this. This is a 45-45-90 triangle. In a 45-45-90 triangle, you're taking half of a square. So this problem comes up a lot and a lot of people have issues with it because they can't focus on how do I take a triangle out of a square and, and certain properties that apply. So if you can understand that this 45, 45, 90 is really just half of a square, it's half of every single square that there is, then you should be able to do these problems uh, without any issues. And by that, I mean with this example one here, if I wanna find the area of a square with a diagonal length of eight square roots of two. So the square would look like this, and the diagonal is just this right here. And if they tell me that this is eight square roots of two, what am I supposed to do with that? You can use the Pythagorean theorem, but you're gonna waste your time, it's too much. If every single triangle is supposed to be like this one right here, I'm sorry, every square has a triangle that looks like this right here, then we're gonna go ahead and match it up to this eight square roots of two. So if I go ahead and draw it right next to it, I'm gonna draw that triangle with eight square roots of two, okay? So look at the triangle that you have, I'm sorry. Look at the triangle that they give you with the eight square roots of two here, and I've got nothing on the legs, where this is x and x, but I have something right here. If I were to take this triangle and put it right on top of here, this eight square roots of two would land right on top of that x. You could say that they were equal to each other. So then if I see that it's eight square roots of two is equal to x square roots of two, well, if the eight's here and that's an x, you know that the missing, um, the missing value has to be eight, so x equals eight. So that means in this square, the dimensions of the square are eight by eight. Since they want the area of the square, be careful, it's a two-part question. Since they want the area, you have to find the side lengths and then multiply those side lengths together. If you have eight and eight, just like you do here, that's gonna be 64, and that's gonna give you the area of that square. The next example just shows you when they give you the legs, how to get the, the hypotenuse. For this problem here, we see that we have two triangles, specifically two right triangles. And I'm given four and three and X and 13. Well, if I figure this triangle out first, that'll give me the value here. And then I can use that to find the second one. So this is a two-parter. So using my Pyth or Pythagorean theorem, a, B is always the legs, C is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always opposite of the right angle. So I wanna do four, let's do this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if I do four squared and three squared, it has to equal my C squared. 16 plus nine equals C squared. Gives me 25 is equal to C squared. That squared is there, C's gotta be completely by itself. How do I get rid of it? The opposite of squaring something is square rooting. So I want to square root both values and I get five is equal to C. Well, that means that five belongs, oops, five belongs in this spot right here. So now I take the same thing and do it again for this big triangle. I take my leg and my leg, I'm gonna have x squared plus five squared equals 13 squared, and then just run it right down. 
And then this time you see it doesn't work out like the other one. We have to bring our value over. X squared is equal to 144. And then finally, square root X is equal to 12. For this type of problem, you know, you got to put the work in. But as you, as you practice these over and over, they'll, they'll come to you right away and you'll just be able to breeze right through it. Okay, geometry word problems. Be careful on the geometry word problems because there's a lot of terminology that goes into it and you have to be, um, you have to be aware of what it is that they're talking about, especially the perimeter, circumference, area, and surface area. So I'm gonna go into this one for perimeter. The perimeter of a rectangle is 52. If the length is 10 less than two times the width, what's the width? And so as I go into this, I look at the problem and I, and I pick out what it is that I need to know. We're dealing with perimeter. If they're telling you what the perimeter is, chances are you're gonna to have to use perimeter to solve this in some way, shape, or form. And there's my value 52, but also it's a rectangle. That's also important because we know special properties about rectangles. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a rectangle draw a rectangle on my on my um my paper okay so once i have that rectangle i go ahead and start filling in the information it says 10 less than two times width be careful with this because as we read it some people may just say 10 less than two times width and when we do that uh, we're actually wrong because of this less than with less than and with fewer than. These are the only times in math with, um, and it deals with subtraction, that as you read it, you write it backwards. So that's why this is 2w minus 10, and this one is incorrect. So watch your less than and watch your fewer than, because I can tell you that there's a high percentage chance that you will see this on the exam because of the way that this is done. So now that I know that that's one of the lengths, I put the 2w minus 10 here. Because it's a rectangle, we know opposite sides are same, so that's why the 2w minus 10 is there as well. And then w goes on for the width. And so now remember, it said perimeter is equal to 52. Well, how do I incorporate that in solving this problem? Perimeter means to add all sides. So literally add all the sides that you have and you'll get this equation here. Um, another way to do it is group it out. I see all my W's are right here. So how many W's do you have? We'll have two here, one here makes three, two more make five, one more makes six. I've got six W, and then what's left are my negative 10 and negative 10, and that gives me negative 20 right there. It just kind of falls right into place. Okay, and then from there, solve it, just algebra. The most important part is getting this rectangle with the right dimensions and then knowing that it's perimeter and just go right from there, solve it real easy. Okay, the next one we have here is talking about surface area. What is the surface area of this triangular prism? And so this may take a little time, but the best way to do this is to unfold the object, so to speak, and you make what's called a net. So I'm gonna go ahead and the base or the bottom, pretend this is a tent. So this would be the floor. There's a rectangle here and it's the floor. And then here's that first triangle you see, but because it's a prism, it has two of the same bases. So there's one there. Then I'm just gonna unfold it so that I'm left with a rectangle here and a rectangle here. So if I flatten that object out, that's what it would look like in two dimensions. Then put all your all your um, your measurements. This is 11, and then as we see how the six was here, that also means there was a six here. So that's a six. This is a seven. This is a six. And then for my triangle, you have this. This is called the altitude, and this is four. So now what I want to do is I want to see this as and just look at big picture here. Surface area is when we add up the areas of all sides. There are one, two, three, four, five sides in this shape. If I look at this right here, so if I see this as one big rectangle, okay, then add these bottom dimensions 
and then multiply it by the 11. So if you can see that, that will help you tremendously. So let's do six and six is 12 plus seven is gonna give us uh, 19, right? So we have 19, excuse me. We have 19 times 11. And then that's gonna take care of all those sides. And now I gotta figure out what this triangle is. Well, area of a triangle is going to be one half base times height. Base is seven, height is four. So I'm gonna do one half base is seven times four, but I have two triangles here. There's two sides, so multiply that by two. So as you do the math real quick, you get 209 for the big rectangle part, and then you get 28 for, uh, for the two bases, add them up, and you have 237, the answer is C. So if you can visualize and unfold your three-dimensional objects into what's called a net, you will see that it's much easier to go ahead and find that surface area. On to um, some more with angles and different uh, measurements here. You can see that these are parallel lines. This line, this line, and this line. Anytime a line goes through a parallel line, it's called a transversal. So what happens is something special where if I were to box out these intersections, they are exactly the same. As long as they're on the same transversal, they're exactly the same. So when they want me to find out what these variables are, if I were to take this intersection, pick it up and drop it right onto here, the corresponding parts would go ahead and equal each other. Or just think of it like this, go to the upper left hand quadrant, so our upper left hand. So up left is this one, up left is this one, this one has a value, it's X, that means that one is X. And same here, that's 40, so that has to be 40. So it's looking like this right here, where I have a 40 and an X here. Well, we know that straight lines are equal to 180 degrees. And if it takes 40 degrees to get from here to here, how many degrees does it take to get from here to here? Well, if the total is 180, subtract my 40, and that gives me 140 degrees. Looking at my answer choices, the only one that has 140 is A and B. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna box out my intersections, where I just box it out, just like this, and then upper left is 75, upper left is Y. Well, if these two are in the same part, it's the same thing. It just means Y is equal to 75. They're corresponding angles, what they're called. So the only one that has 75 is B, okay? And then finally, for triangles, just understand the magic number for triangles is 180. If I'm given three angles, a, B, and C, and B and C, that's these two angles right here, are equal to 85 degrees. Well, out of my magic number of 180 for a triangle, I have 85, take the 85 away, and that'll give you what's left. Since they're telling you these two, I don't need to know what A is or B is, but I do know when you add them up, you get 85. So as I subtract this from here, you'll see that you get 95 just like that, and the answer is D, right?